Friday, January 17th, 2020. Um, interest rates have not moved. We've been in the same spot really since early December. The definitive measure is the United States 10-year Treasury note, which is traded between you know, 170 and 190, going all the way back to September, and even tighter since December. Mortgage rates, high threes, four. Uh, but there are some subtle changes out there, uh, none of them in the U.S. The U.S. economic data is consistent with 2% GDP growth, maybe a little under, uh, a little rise in inflation during the year to the Fed's target seems to be unwinding back under it. The Fed's forecast of policy on target open-ended, uh, so far so good. If it makes it all the way through the year, it would be a miracle, but so far so good. The subtle changes are, for the most part, overseas, although one of them is here. Uh, overseas, uh, the German 10-year Treasury is a global bellwether like the U.S. 10-year. And one of the reasons that our rates have stayed low, even though we're borrowing a trillion dollars and spending it every year, and even though the Fed tightened during part of last year, the 10-year German Treasury uh, fell all the way to negative 0.70 by last summer, and we fell with it. And for years, the, the two have tracked each other uh, with a tight spread. That spread has broken down. The German 10-year is now up to minus 0.2. In the same period of time, our 10-year T-note has risen much less. So w what's up? I mean, rising long-term interest rates usually correlate with an improving economy. The German economy is not. The German economy hit a six-year low last month. It's dead in the water, not, not growing at all. What happened this fall, Mario Draghi had been the head of the European Central Bank. He, his term was up in September, and he's been replaced by uh, Christine Lagarde of the IMF and also a Chicago corporate attorney, but thoroughly French. Uh, Mario Draghi had been the king of stimulus. He'd been the trigger for negative interest rates. Uh, his watchwords had been whatever it takes uh, to hold the euro together and to hold the eurozone together. Uh, it's clear that the European Central Bank is, uh, is done. There isn't anything else really that it can do, especially given the single currency and the behavior of the Germans. The Lagarde has called for fiscal stimulus across Europe, meaning borrow more money and spend it and presumably the ECB would buy some of, enough of those bonds to keep their rates low. So that's the reason that German rates have risen. Uh, hopes for a recovery in Europe are not well founded. Uh, hopes that the Germans will finally begin to spend some money. They run a budget surplus. It's the only one in Europe. And would actually buy someone else's exports. They don't. They run a trade surplus of 7% of their GDP. Uh, the second subtle event, China. Uh, China claimed a 6.1% growth in GDP in the most recent period. And if you believe that, I have a bridge across the Yangtze to sell to you. Uh, China's in uh, a, a unique form of distress. Uh, Hong Kong has made it clear that it wants nothing whatever to do with the China of the party and Xi. Uh, this week, Taiwan uh, uh, elected a new president who wasn't really a particularly attractive candidate, but she carried a 57% landslide because she's against any form of China takeover. Uh, I, I, China says, ne never mind, we would, we are newest data out of China are demographic. Its births fell last year another 4%. The last time as low as they are now was 1961, in the middle of a desperate famine. A replacement birth rate of 2.1 births per female in a nation. Um, 2.1 is necessary or your population shrinks. China is now at 1.6 and falling. China will be the first nation not to become uniformly wealthy to have a deeply aging population. Seems true all across Europe, and increasingly so here, although we in Europe are wealthy across our populations. 
The last piece of subtlety. Um, uh, my friend Nick Timoros, who is, covers the Fed for the Wall Street Journal and is the best Fed reporter we've ever had, um, wrote a good piece today about our Fed's absence of tools should we fall into another recession and, uh, and making the same points, uh, uh, quoting others at the Fed, that we, next time around we made fiscal, may need fiscal stimulus ourselves. Uh, Bernanke disagrees. He says the Fed still does have some ammunition, but it's modest. But the important thing in the talk about the Fed being out of ammunition is the only talk at the Fed is what to do without tools if the economy slows again. And that's as profound a long-term forecast for low interest rates as I know of. Now, it, in some respects, it's not good news. Good news for housing. Have a good weekend.